to Getting to Know Jesus. We are in volume 12, lesson uh, pages, uh, lesson 147, pages 11 to 22. Our Bible text is on pages 12 to 14, and our lesson notes are on pages 15 to 20. We're getting started in the last volume of the Getting to Know Jesus series. Some of you thought, oh, no, we never get there. Others are excited, man, I'm almost complete. And some of you started in the middle and said, oh dear, are you going to start over when you get done? Yes, we are. So we'll talk to you about that as we go. But Jesus is condemned, Judas dies, and Pilate cries. We're going to talk tonight about justifying wrongdoing. So that's where we're headed. You'll notice here on our timeline, our arrow, those of you who are sitting in the back, I'm sorry, we're just going to have to get a church with higher ceilings so we can raise this hot fire, but you, you underwrite it, we'll get it. But we're down here, right down here at the very bottom of our chart. Uh, we're going through the last, uh, well, the last 14 lessons of Jesus' life. And I had to make this arrow kind of big because we're up here in Lesson 47, wow. uh, tried by the Sanhedrin, due to suicide, mm -hmm. and he kind of heads off to Pilate here before we get done tonight. Mm -hmm. So that'll kind of give you where we are. In the last week, actually, it's Friday night now. Wow. We're talking hours now, not days, not weeks, not months, not years, hours. And in, uh, let's see, well, by the time we get to lesson 151, we're going to be talking minutes. Actually, yeah, 150, 151, we're going to be talking minutes. And, and then we go from there. Go ahead. Yes, sir. All four Gospels include only 33 days in the life of Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the whole lot. John takes three weeks yeah. out of the whole life. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke all kind of cram little bits here and a little bit there. And, and you put it all together. But look at, you, you're seeing as we go through the harmony of the Gospels, you see Matthew, Mark, and Luke side by side how much detail you get <laughs> that you don't get when you read just the one Gospel. Well, let's talk about this. When was the last time you did something you knew was wrong, but you tried to justify it? Officer, the light wasn't really red. It was just almost red. It was yellow when I went halfway through. Yeah, it was yellow when I entered the intersection. Morgan? A few weeks ago, I was taking my wife to the doctor, and we were late. And we were later because of when the sheriff stopped me. Oh. <laughs> But officer, I was only going 17 miles over the speed limit. Don't you give us the first 18 miles? 22 miles. Did he give you one? fast But, but Mr. IRS agent, I didn't know that I couldn't take that tax deduction. We are. Were you successful in removing the guilt and shame of the wrong behavior? Has there been a situation that you did that was wrong in which you acknowledged the wrong behavior? Yes, I was wrong. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I still love you. If you're a smart husband, you know how to say that to your wife once in a while. And probably justifiably so. Whether we want to admit it or not. What were the results of your confession? I tell you what, it's a lot easier to forgive forgiveness when you're willing to say, yes, I was wrong, than it is when you try to say, well, if this is his fault, well, then he's not there, so. But, it's, but that's what we do. We'll bring the straw horse. And there's no straw horse to blame. In similar matter, when was the last time you criticized or condemned someone because you didn't like them or didn't like what they were doing? Mm. Were they really doing something wrong or just doing something, uh, were you doing something wrong that they exposed? I didn't like him because he tattled on me. Or were you judging them because you didn't like them or for some reason? Well, they go to that church and that church teaches this and our church teaches this and we're right and they're wrong and so I don't like them. Oh, boy. I've had that. The things that, that us Christians <clears throat> have gotten into. This lesson is going to challenge you to do some self-examination. We're in Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. Mark 15, verse 1, Luke 22, verses 66 to chapter 23, verse 1, and John 18, verses 28 to 32. Jesus is on trial for doing what is right. However, the people trying Him are doing wrong, and they're looking for ways to justify and cover up their wrong behavior. How do the Jewish religious leaders justify their guilt? Well, sometimes they'll 
do that, yes, uh-huh. Religious leaders justify their wrongdoing. Matthew 27, verse 1, Mark 15, verse, first part of verse 1, and Mark 22, verses 66 to 71. So very early in the morning, the chief priest with the elders of the people, both the chief priests at daybreak, that's, that's a key word right there, yep. the teacher of the law and the Sanhedrin met together with, and Jesus was led before them, they came to the decision to put Jesus to death. If you are the Christ, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the mighty God. And they all asked, are you then the Son of God? He replied, you are right in saying, I am. I get my Charlton Heston voice in there for that. And then they said, why do we need any more testimony? We've heard it with our own lips. Religious leaders try to justify their own doing. After daylight, Caiaphas again, now after daylight, Caiaphas again, Caiaphas again asked Jesus if he is the Son of God. Now, Jesus complied by declaring that he is the Son of God and soon, and will soon be seen sitting on the right hand of God. Now, notice they asked him, the, the first part of the night, they plied him with questions and he wouldn't answer. And they tried to get witnesses to witness against him and he wouldn't answer. And the witnesses couldn't agree. I mean, all this, all night long, they're trying to find a way to condemn Jesus. Finally, they take him to Caiaphas in the wee hours of the morning. And Caiaphas asked him, are you the son of God? And he says, yes. Oh, he ripped his clothes. We talked about that in last week's lesson. But they can't. That, that's all illegal. They cannot try a man in the dark. Yep. They've got to wait till sun up. Daybreak, sun up. He asked him again, are you the son of God? Okay, Chris, you want to say something then, Morty? Well, uh, you've answered my question. Oh, okay. Morty? He's actually saying he's more than just the son of God. He was, I am the God, Almighty God. Yeah. I am the one yeah. title reserved for God. That was a very big and bold <clears throat> declaration. So Jesus declares that he is at God and he's going to sit at the right hand with God. And, and of course, so it's after daybreak now. But notice, it's not the witnesses that condemn Jesus. It wasn't Campus or Aranus. It was Jesus' own words. The point being that Jesus is in absolute control of everything that's going on around him. They can't touch him. If he would have spoken one word in his defense, you know that he would have had the words to stop the whole proceeding Amen. and he could live to be 139 years old like I profess I'm going to live to if I don't die first. <laughs> and uh, and he'd be going strong. But our sins would not have been atoned for. And we wouldn't be doing so well. So although Jesus had said almost the same words earlier, it was still nighttime, Mosaical law prohibits condemnation before sunrise. Now that the sun is up, Caiaphas asked again. It's somewhat as if he doesn't believe what he heard earlier and he wants Jesus to repent of his confession so Caiaphas and those assembled can or repeat his confession so Caiaphas and those assembled can justify their rant and their hatred of Jesus. No one likes to be a wrongdoer. I don't think even the vilest criminals in our jails really want to be, well, I... There may be some who just have got their mind, so I can't do good, so I'm just going to do bad. Sociopath. And they want to be sociopath, yeah. And so they delight in doing wrong doing until somebody stops them. Martha? Um, and to me, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I don't know why they bothered to ask him anything. They've already, they've already condemned him to death. And they would have condemned him to death, That's true. death no matter what he said. Yeah. Yeah. So well, they had their mind made up. They had to bring it out kind of verbally and Formally mm -hmm. in a court of law, yeah, for the they record, already, they the asked, kangaroo court, it may be. Yeah, but they already asked him before daybreak, which was illegal anyway. Yeah. So they already knew right. what he was going to say. They're already doing it. It's a, it's a hung jury. It's, it's a kangaroo court. It's everything illegal, oh, and yet yeah. they're doing it anyhow. Where are they now? Some men uh, call them sociopaths. Men, uh, men who mm. do wrong things and. Don't have any feeling about it. They don't have any negative feelings uh -huh. about it. Yeah. They call them sociopaths, but uh, the Bible calls them reprobates. Mm. Yeah. And a rep someone with a reprobate mind is someone who knew right from wrong, but because they're 
determined persistence in doing the wrong thing, their conscience was seared, and it come to a point where they actually have no active conscience in their in their yeah. life at all. And they could they could do the most brutal acts. Like cut a man's head off. Someone, <laughs> like cut someone's head off. They could do things like that and not even feel remorse because they're reprobating mind. There is no consciousness yeah. of wrong or right and wrong in their life. And that's why it's impossible to bring them to a place of common. The only way you're going to stop that kind of a mind is to death. Yeah. Kill them. Yeah. Christy, you want to say something? Well, aside from the miracle of God. Well, um, what is so important about God? About what? I mean, the sun out. What's so important about that? It's I did not understand your question. So why, why is the sun out so oh, okay. Mosaic of law. You can't try a man in the dark. You have to try him during the day. That was part of the Mosaic of law. Sunrise. All sorts of bad things go on in the dark. Like trying to get Jesus to confess or getting people to lie about him to get him in trouble and so forth. In the daylight, it's a little more exposed, a little more public. Some of the people aren't sleeping. We want to believe that we will be justified in our wrongdoing. A billboard in Oregon showed up on uh, the blaze this afternoon. Uh, the billboard had Leviticus, uh, whatever the scripture is, that says it is wrong for a man to lie with a man as a man lies with a woman. And on the other side, that was on half of the billboard, the other half of the billboard said God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. And there are people getting offended at that because it's convicting them and exposing them of their sinful behavior. We want to believe that we are justified in what we do. Some churches don't want to stand up for the gospel and so they're allowing, ordaining ministers who claim to be homosexuals, lesbians or male or female, whatever, and they, oh, but well, we don't want to offend anybody. But the Bible doesn't care. Jesus never said don't offend people. He said stand up for what's right. Love the sinner, but hate the sin. You, you know what? Um, they now have um, Jewish lesbian rabbis. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is a shock to me. Boy, yeah. that's a call. Oh, yeah. Rabbi women, yep. And they're lesbian that's awful. rabbis. So because we want to be justified in our, our, our do, what we do, we will often look for ways to justify our actions in an effort to deny Though what we are actually doing is wrong. Well, yes, I didn't do this, but... And we have some explanation. We some have some justification. Well, it was okay this time because... And we come up with all sorts of... Hey, you and I have been there. We've all been there one time or another. I didn't want to admit that I told a lie. I didn't want to admit that I was doing something I really shouldn't have been doing. Or looking at something I shouldn't have been looking at. Or, or stuff like that. And so one of the common ways to justify our behavior is to find a way to blame the other person and justify our behavior as defensive. Well, I had to do this because they did that. The priest accused Jesus of violating the Mosaic law, and they used that as justification to take him before Pilate and demand that he be crucified. They didn't want to kill him themselves, because all the people would blame them. But if they get the Romans to kill him, then they can blame it on the Romans. And when the people say, you killed Jesus, no, 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 we didn't kill Jesus. He did a bad thing, but there's Romans to kill Jesus. It's like some of the stuff that's coming out of Washington right now, and I don't want to take time to go into that because we get too far sidetracked on where we need to go. So they tried to accuse Jesus of violating the Mosaic Law. Now, if you don't realize that Jesus is the Son of God, if you will not accept the evidence, then in your mind you would have clearly said he's violating the Mosaic Law by claiming that he's the Son of God, he deserves to die. But if you have honestly examined the Old Testament Scriptures and were studiously looking at what Jesus taught and did, and comparing that to Scripture, you'd have said he was the Son of God. What you? Yeah. They actually believed the basic premise that they were right, that nobody could be the Son of God. That's mm. in their mind. Yeah. That's in their mind. But... The methods that they used, they knew were dark methods. The methods right. were they dark methods. Them. Yes. That's why they went behind the scenes to do it. Yeah. They did it at night instead of in the daytime. Well, let's go on here. We're, we're going to take a uh, short last week. I'm going to go long tonight. I can tell it's coming on. <laughs> Judas realizes his wrongdoing. Matthew chapter 27, verses 3 to 5. Now, Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned. He was seized with remorse. Mark, Luke, and John don't tell you that. 
Uriah comes in, hand his bill this, and he returned the 30 silver coins to the chief priests and the elders. I have sinned, he said, for I betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Now Acts chapter 1, verse 18 and 19, I put that in here, even though the apostles didn't know that until after Jesus had written, but it just repeats this. The reward that he <laughs> got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field where he fell headlong and his body burst open and his yeah. intestines spilled out. How gross, we've just had dinner. <laughs> so Judas threw the temple and money in the temple and left and he went away and he hanged himself. And evidently in the process of... How did that happen? Huh? I mean, he, he hung himself. He tied a rope around his neck, stuck it in a tree, took a little flying walk and hung for what he did. Yep. A lot of people do it. He died, right? He died. So how did he burst? <laughs> evidently the rope he probably the broke. And he was right. And he may have been <laughs> right by that time. The body hangs there for a while. The body, or maybe the head came loose and the rest of the body fell down and hit the ground spot and his insides came out. Yeah, but since here he returned the 30 silver coins. She has. Yes, he returned the 30 silver coins. He tried to get out from under his guilt by returning the 30 silver coins. Richard. Okay, you find that often uh, Jesus would talk himself out of dilemma. Uh, when they tried to throw him over a cliff, he talked his way out and passed right yep. into the midst. And Judas was with him every time Jesus talked his way out of all these incidences, uh, yeah. whether it was in the temple or whether it was uh, wherever. And so he escaped death time after time after time. And Judas figured, I'm going to make some money on this deal, and Jesus will talk his way out of it. But this time Jesus didn't talk his way out of it. And Judas says, whoops. Whoops. And Judas whoops. tried to talk his way out of it. And what Jesus had done was right, and what they were doing to Jesus was wrong, what Judas did was wrong, and he couldn't talk his way out of it. He did throw well, the money back, and then he knows how holy the holy men were. We can't use his blood money we for anything. Well, we're going to get there. there. Hang on just a second. I want to tell this first. <laughs> he did ahead of me. Judas has been somewhere nearby, and he realized that he did a bad thing in betraying Jesus. He tries to undo his sin by returning the money to the Jews that, and telling the Jews that they're wrong in condemning Jesus. And, or Jesus, and when they reject his guilt, he goes outside the southern wall uh, to the valley of Hinnom, finds a tree and some rope, and hangs himself. To amplify the magnitude of his sin, Luke reports in the book of Acts that Judas burst open when his body falls to the ground. Evidently, after the rope has been cut, or the rope breaks, or something there, uh, maybe the branch of the tree said, I've had enough of this, and it breaks, and he falls down, and he burst open. If Judas would, if Judas would have come to God in repentance, yeah. he could have been forgiven. Right. As ugly and horrible as that sin is, if he would have come to God, yeah. he didn't. He went to the priest instead, in remorse and extreme guilt, he commits suicide in hopes of escaping the guilt of his sin. How many people are trying to get the government to silence the church, to silence freedom of speech? or to allow their uh, uh, same-sex marriage because they think that if they can get the government to approve this, like they try to get government to approve abortion, that they will remove the guilt that comes from that behavior. Yep. Sin is still sin. Mm -hmm. Women who have been through abortion still feel the guilt and shame. Yep. They know what they did. Mm -hmm. Some of them gloss it over. They're sociopaths. <laughs> Richard? Mm -hmm. The next level we're into in Holland and other countries is what they call um, suicide, legal suicide, or uh, euthanasia. Assisted suicide or euthanasia. And, and the interesting yeah. thing is the old Dr. Death himself yeah. uh, didn't want to take his own life. He wanted to be delivered from his illnesses. Uh, Kevorkian, Jack yeah. Kevorkian, yeah. 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 Death himself. Uh, in his latter days, he backpedaled personally. It was good enough for you, but not good enough for me. Good enough for you, but not good yeah, enough for me. That's the, truth. the ultimate consequence is that sin is eternally upon Judas as he burns in hell. Uh, the only way you and I can escape the guilt of our sin is to confess it to God, repent, which means you stop that sinful behavior. True. You recognize a temptation and say, I'm not going over there where I get tempted anymore. Or if I do get tempted, I'm going to say, whoops, I'm being tempted right now. And I get away, I escape, I, I flee, whatever I have to do mentally, emotionally, 
physically. Get away from that temptation. Repent and do it God's way. As we've already seen, the only sin that cannot be forgiven is to deny the Holy Spirit's testimony that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, our Lord and Savior. Any other sin can be forgiven if the sinner repents and turns to God. So Jeffrey Dahmer, who murdered all those uh, girls back uh, until he was finally caught and sent to prison, repented before he died. And you will see his repentant soul in heaven. He said, I was wrong, but God forgave me, because God can forgive even that much horrendous murder. That, that woman who killed all those men, uh, they made a movie called The Monster. And it, yeah, in uh, she repented at the end too. She was uh, yeah. born Texas. again. Texas. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As, as horrible. Yeah. How dare God let somebody in that does such horrible things? But it's not about you know what? <laughs> how dare God let me in? And I was born and raised going to church by most standards would be a little goody two shoes. Even though I've got a lot of sin in my past, I don't want to tell you about. Richard. General, General Noriega is another one to be added to that list. General Noriega, yeah. with all the evil he did. We have a friend who baptized General Noriega into Christ and talked to him about living a Christian life. Who was that? Tony? Tony. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, he, he met with him personally, led him to a relationship with Jesus Christ, and helped nurture him in his walk with Christ. Well, Judas didn't turn to God. Let's go on. Here's our picture. We're looking south at the Valley of Hinnom. Somewhere along this valley here, Judas found a tree. I can't wait. I know. This is where the potter's I'm field I'm was purchased. Here's some gravestones here. I don't know if this was the potter's field or if the potter's field was somewhere else in this area, but there's there's the valley of Hinnom. Is that where Judas was? That's where he <laughs> fell down and popped over. I don't think you're going to find a 2,000-year-old uh, oak tree. I don't think we'll find it. Or a mulberry <laughs> What, whatever it was. We don't know which tree it was. Well, let's go on. Religious leaders hide their wrongdoing. Matthew 27, verses 6 through 10. The chief priest picked up coins and said, it's against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That's why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Or Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language al Kadimu, that is the field of blood. <coughs> that, then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took 30 silver coins, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Jeremiah, two, three, four plus hundred years earlier, and here they are, fulfilling it to the word. How do we reconcile the two verses where it says that he threw the money into the temple and left. And the other verse says That's that he bought question. the potter's field. Yeah, Acts says he bought Judas the field. didn't buy the potter's field. The priest at the temple bought the potter's field. Yeah, they said they right. used the money. But they used Judas' money with it. They used the Judas' money. money. Yeah. Judas yeah. Or, or they used the money that they gave to Judas that he threw back at them. Ironically, they <laughs> because it was the scripture right. recognized the wrongness because they called it blood money. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. Right. The scripture says the blood Judas money. bought the field. What is blood money? Uh... Let's see. In Acts, it says Judas bought a yeah. field. Well, yeah, because he gave the money back. I don't have verse 9. Well, yeah, they can attribute it to Judas because he gave the money back that they used for it. I'd have to look up the other verses to see the rest of that. Okay. What is blood money? Money that was used to kill somebody oh. or obtained by somebody's death. Yep. That would be blood money. Okay. Go ahead and take some point. Uh, mobster came up to his priest. He says, how much to, to murder a man? And he said, I don't know, it was $10,000. Wow. For him to do penance, and he was planning on, he was a hit man, but he just had to figure out how to make it right with the church. So he'd go ahead and do his... So you'd be and, a hit man and still be and, a good and Catholic? Pay, and pay yeah. his uh, recompense. It happened. It happened. Well, religious leaders hide their wrongdoing. Judas shows the remorse for his behavior in trying to return the money. But the priest reject his repentance and declare that it is against the law of Moses to put the money back into the treasury. It's so funny that it was against the law to take the money and use it, give it to Judas to bribe as a bribe to commit a criminal act, 
But it's not against the law. That now it's against the law to, to put it back into the treasure. Oh, they made it. It's like shooting away the net, swallowing the camel. Yes, uh huh. That's what, that's what you're doing. Yeah. What you're doing is wrong, but if I do the same thing, it's okay, because I'm justified when I it's do it. It's called a hypocrite. Wait a minute now. <laughs> the hypocrite, the guy that looks at the sex, non violence, and nudity on his DVD player. <laughs> The Jewish religious leaders know that the giving the money to Judas to betray Jesus was wrong. Now that it has been returned, they admit that it is sin money and use it to buy a field where they can bury foreigners. It is odd to me how a criminal can be caught in the act and then go to court and plead, Not guilty, Your Honor! When we have done something wrong, we can't change our behavior and do what is right until we admit that what we were doing is wrong. Those of you that are in AA or NA or had a past, until every one of us, until I realized, sitting on the back road, Osage City Christian Church, that I had not made a confession of my sins and Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and walked down that aisle and said, I'm a sinner, I need to be baptized into Christ, I was still in my sin. But when I recognized my wrong and then said, I'm going to turn my life around, then I can change it. When a drug addict or an alcoholic says, I'm a, I've got a drug problem or I've got an alcohol problem, then they can do something. But as long as they say, oh, I don't have a drink or problem, I can quit any time. They've got a problem. Yeah. And some of you who lead the AA and NA groups can tell us all about it, although you can't do that because you're not allowed to. <laughs> what's said here stays here. And that's that's okay. over but it's amazing how drug addicts and alcoholics or people with other sin addictive sinful behavior will not change until they first acknowledge that they were wrong and they need to change their behavior. And when they admit their sin, then they can work on repentance. Well, let's talk about another one. Religious leaders recruit government leaders in doing wrong. Matthew 27, verse 2, Mark 15, verse 1b, Luke 23, verse 1, and John 18, verse 28 to 32. And we've got a, a big, long heading here. I'll abbreviate that in the previous slide, but we've got a little bit down here. Isn't that like what today's government is today? Do what? Isn't that what's going on today? Today's government. Oh! Yeah. Government leaders have been doing wrong? Well, yeah, sometimes it's, sometimes it's government leaders recruiting the government leaders. Sometimes it's religious leaders. They, the Sanhedrin, uh, the whole assembly of the Jews, bound Jesus, they rose and they led him away and handed him from Caiaphas to over to Pilate to the palace of the Roman governor. Now, uh, John says, by now it was early morning and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So, so Pilate came out to them and asked, what are the charges you're bringing against this man? If we were not a criminal, then we cried, we would not have handed him over to you. In other words, I really don't want to tell you. <laughs> Pilate said, take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone the Jews objected. So this happened so that the words of Jesus had spoken, indicated the kind of death he was going to die, would be fulfilled. He said, you'll see the Son of Man lifted up, hanging on a tree. That's what they tried to do to him. The chief priests and religious leaders who have gathered to condemn Jesus now have an excuse to, yes. <coughs> to demand Jesus' death according to their beliefs. Roman rule makes it illegal for them to kill Jesus, although the uh, Romans usually look the other way when they did execute someone, especially if it was by stoning. Oh, they're going to have a little rock concert down there. <laughs> Poor fella. Uh, I think he's going to have a crushing experience. I don't think he'll ever do that again. <coughs> well, so what? They're a little feud among themselves. Let them kill them. We don't care. Romans hated the Jews like the Jews hated the Romans. They also want to blame Jesus' death on the Romans to pacify those Jews who believe, who believe in Jesus so that they take Jesus to Pilate in an effort to pressure Pilate to have Jesus crucified. Now, we're going to have some fun with this in the next, well, I don't know about fun, but we're going to see some interesting things coming in the next lesson or two. Christy? Remember when they put Jesus up there in bottom? Oh, let's get this man. Let him go free. We'll get there.
We're, we're not there yet. We're coming. We're not going to skip that. We're not going to skip a thing. We're going to get it all in detail. Richard. Hey, uh, back on up on Pilate. The Jews were allowed capital punishment until Pilate decided he wanted to make sure the Roman law was the supreme court of the land. And so he took that right away from the Jews and gave it to the Roman authority. Now when it came to the death of Christ, he kicks himself for taking that authority away from them. Oh, we're going to see he's that. Got to the hot potato instead of passing back. We're, we're going to see that coming up. I, I don't know if it's the next lesson or the one following. Uh, we got a little back and forth between Pilate and Herod and Pilate before we get to the, the punchline on that. But we'll get there. Don't you worry. Just because we can pass a law or get some legal right to justify behavior does not make it right. We talked about that already. Man cannot make law. Did I finish reading this? No. Yeah, okay. That's right. There was so much I couldn't get it on one slide, so I had to put it on two. <laughs> Man cannot make law. Man can only interpret and apply the laws that God has made. Even if we make what is wrong legal, we will not remove the guilt from doing it. How many laws have we tried to pass to justify our sin, and it's still sin? Yeah. Wrong is still wrong regardless of how you try to justify it. Yeah. This is it is so like the abortionists and the homosexuals in trying to get the government to legalize their wrongdoing in hopes that they will be justified in their actions and won't feel the guilt of their sin. Though they try to legalize their behavior, they still seek reek in guilt and shame until they admit their sin and repent and allow Jesus to come in and take that sin away from them and fill them with his love. Richard? Uh, we need to concentrate on the current issue, and that's uh, medical marijuana. Oh, that's uh, another issue that we're dealing with. I mean, we can, we can beat abortion to death and other things to death, and sometimes we move on to, okay, those issues are or aren't settled, but we do have a current issue that needs a vote no on that amendment oh, I... uh, when it comes up, because right now we who are registered voters can at least make our county do what's right and uh, we can stand up yeah otherwise yeah. Julie's gonna have all her neighbors wanting to her become their drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> I've already had we, tons we, of people to we're have. always gonna have listen, how many people Julie as Christians we've had at least always, twenty people twenty that. people have come to her to ask her to be their source for really? people pop. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell when them I Jesus five the guys and everything, oh you know. Oh my yeah. goodness, I've never tell had Jesus Jesus would they'll give you a prescription I've and you can get it back. I've never had any. Hey, hey class, we need to get back on focus here. We're having too much fun with this one. Bottom line is Jesus would not approve if you did that. No. And you can tell him that. He wouldn't approve if I did that oh, for you. I can't believe it. Though they try to legalize their behavior, they reek in guilt and shame until they repent. Getting others to agree with us does not make us right. So the conclusion is this, wrong is still wrong regardless of the justification. God can forgive any sin if we repent before we die. Except the good Amen. Wrongdoers always like to recruit others to try to lessen the guilt of their sin. Have you notice that? Yeah. If there's three or four of them doing it, then they don't feel so bad as if they're doing it all by themselves. Next week, Jesus... Well, uh oh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Jesus, next week, continues his trials before Pilate, and then Herod, and then back to Pilate. Is there any fairness to be had? No. No. Well, we're going to break up for discussion groups. Go over to page 21 for our discussion questions. We never break up. You can follow us and stay in touch with what is happening with the Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study Ministry on Plaxo, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and watch our video clips on YouTube and GodTube. Getting to Know Jesus is sponsored by New Hope Gospel Ministries. If you'd like to follow along with us and start your Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study group, or just pray for us or support our ministry, you can go to www.gettingtoknowjesus.org and find all the information that we have available for you. If you look at the lower right hand corner, there's a button where you can make a safe and secure donation to the Getting to Know Jesus Bible Study Ministry. Or you can go to the order page and order your Getting to Know Jesus books for your Bible study group. 
Thank you for stopping by and keep us in your prayers and let us know how we can pray for you.